I came to give us an insight into how Satan fights people. The devil invests a lot in utterances and the most vicious demons that you will ever encounter are visions that tamper with your thought life. You will think you are the one thinking, but you don't know that demons have tapped into your thought frequency and they are giving you thoughts. All the demons want is for you to agree with them. When Satan cannot contend with you and win in a frontal attack situation, what he does is that he begins to lay out the plot of deception. Part of the initiatives of the plot of deception is to bring satanic thoughts into your mind. You know I've been a pastor for a, a, a short while. So I have a little experience in dealing with human beings. But you don't believe I have the, the experience. Should I give you some experiences? This is, this I experienced from the field, directly from the field. If you have not practiced ministry, you will not know what I want to say. Number one, I have seen a situation. How will I put it in parable? Because it's here that it happened. So that you will not know the individuals involved. Because I'm not preaching the individuals. I'm preaching the symptoms. Symptoms of the challenge. Sister, I have seen a situation where... How can I paraphrase? A wedding was to take place. You know, I'm not, I'm almost always not in weddings, but for that one, I was around. By the power of God, I was around. But I had my collar was on, we were preparing, you know, <laughs> and all of that. Then when we came to church, we began to pray in tongues as my cousin of peace. Before the wedding, I would wake up by five. Our weddings here start by nine, so I wake up by five in the morning, then I begin to pray in tongues, just to, to browse the two people that want to get married, if there is going to be a challenge in the future. I do browsing from five. The browsing must be for four hours. So when I come into the premises of the arena, I begin to do final browsing. Just if God has anything to say so that I will be aware. Alright? Now, so when I was doing the final browsing, the groom was already present sitting down. You know, we normally come first. So we're waiting for the bride. I was browsing. High in spirit. Browsing. And then the bride came in a vehicle. And when she showed up in a vehicle, she refused to come down. So I knocked her, her the window. She wound down. I saw she was crying. You are crying on your wedding day. Then she busted into tears. Ah, what is happening? That's okay. Let's see in the office. This nobody must see these tears. Package these tears. Let's go to the office. Then when she entered the office, I said, cry. So she, ah, oh, ah. When you are counseling, <coughs> you don't understand the burden of a pastor. You don't understand. When you are counseling, don't stop people from crying. Sometimes, the reason why they came to you is so that they would just cry and release it. It's not for you to say anything. So, I gave her the opportunity. So she finished crying. They are singing him here. Me, I'm, where am I? You know, you guys don't know this one. So I'm telling you from my own practice. She finished crying. So she told me that the person she wants to get married to, she doesn't love him. Wait now. That's not the that's not the reason why I'm telling you this, this story. I said, okay, I get your point. Can you take this pen and write? Two things that will go wrong if you marry this man. Just write it. Because what I wanted her to understand that she could not understand. I wanted to lead her practically into a knowledge that, that she was not experienced enough to understand. If you have not dealt with devils long enough, you can't understand what I wanted to teach that lady. She did not understand that there were borderline demons that didn't want her to get married. And they were the ones that were stirring up her soul. How can I get this lady to the point of enlightenment, I need wisdom from the Holy Ghost. So the, uh, the wisdom that came was, give her a pen, let her write the two things that can go wrong. If she... That was when she discovered there was no, no reason. But she was feeling turbulent in her soul. She didn't know that it was through the ministry of demons. And she was saying it was the Holy Ghost that was, that was, you know, I've stayed long in pastoring work, so I know, I know that it, so she could not write it for 15 minutes. I said, I'm waiting. Because I need to go and tell the people why the wedding won't hold. So tell, write the two reasons so that when I go, I'll be bold. That was when she discovered there was no reason. Can we go and continue? 
That's how I said, clean your face, clean your face. Shake yourself, then your, your face will arrange. Shake. So she shook. I said, follow this. Those were the days when there was still a door. So you follow this door. Here we come. Then we joined the hymn. On Christ the solid rock I stand. But you will not know what happened in the office. After the wedding, two months later, this same person came with wine in the night and said, you are a man of God, take me. Because we are able to take her beyond the deception. And I've seen many, many, many sisters do play that same game on their wedding day. You will not believe, I'm telling you from the table of practice, the table of practice. You see, for instance, a lawyer that just graduated from law school doesn't know practice. So you need to call the person. The person might be, you know, uh -huh. two one, it can be pouring out, you know, everything. You need to call the person and say, see. And then you give him a parable from the desk of practice. That demon found occasion on the strength of some some iniquity and then was now given the authority to bring that confusion that's why you need a pastor that knows God because many times you sisters many times you are wrong many times with you are, let me tell you today those things you say you, <laughs> and you know let me also tell you about me if you come and say the Lord say I will leave you we will follow the Lord to the end and there are many people that have come to me to say the Lord when we follow them they entered into dry season now we are begging for mercy because they didn't understand that they were being manipulated by demons that infiltrate the thought the thought realm everyone that didn't submit entered into a drought because they don't understand the terrain you need to have walked in the terrain to be able to test the voices to know the voice of God to be able to help people that need direction I have seen people in this place that people came to marry them. Sister, they said, God is not in She didn't pray. She was following the sensation that was stirred up by demons. She, she had not grown enough to decipher it. And she couldn't trust any of our ministers to submit that process to him or to her. All those people that operate that way, I have seen them before. They have not changed. This, those same symptoms. Ah. Demons. Demons that break into your thought life. We have had experiences of people. A voice tells them, You are going to die. You are going to die. You are going to die. That voice will only be powerful if you believe it. Who has believed our report and to whom is the arm? Um, of the law with you. You know, those days we were still on campus. And this was the genuine experience of a, of a brother. He started having these thoughts that he was going to be a smoker. He just kept coming. He would bind it, the thing would stop. You are not with me. You know, he did not recognize that he was under attack. Because when Satan comes through your thoughts, you, you believe you're under attack when you see a dream and you say, oh, go, go, like this, trying to. Then you say, I'm. it's not always it is like that. The most vicious ones don't even appear in your dream. They just manipulate your thoughts. Sell your ideas. Just like they have sold to some of you sisters that your husband is not alive. You are just a lone ranger passing through this world unnoticed that's how your story will be and it was so subtle and it it, it it came on a day where you were so frustrated people did evil to you and you felt so bad and then satan has said the truth is you are walking alone you will unnoticed in this world the moment you accept it the program behind that insight will begin to run that's the reason why we need a very heavy dose of the word of god in our lives because the Bible reveals that the word of God is a lamp. It's an object of illumination. It has the capacity to disclose things that are hidden. 
it has the capacity also to decipher and to discern and to differentiate that's the nature of the word of God no day passes that I don't invest in the word of God because the more I think in scripture the more difficult it will be for a deceiving spirit to come into my the space of my mind and sow seeds that will germinate and so this voice kept coming to this young man you are going to end up a smoker he has never tried cigarette before he has never tried any such thing before but the thing if that thought if you begin to agree with the thought it will start becoming real that uh, meanwhile the devil will not have audacity to begin to bring such thoughts into your life if there is no opening and the opening cannot be because you are wayward you are loose you are careless the opening can be because there might be a, a foundation of unrighteousness that is built into the family from whence you came. see this devil this devil i need to tell you about this devil i've seen people that were frustrated righteous people say i don't know nothing works nothing works anything i touch it dies anything i touch it dies that's the vengeance of a certain wickedness that's supposed to be the result of a certain wickedness that was perpetrated in his bloodline and the person that did that evil didn't live long enough to repeat so the justice system demanded are you here yeah, they had to satan had to look for an enforcement order <laughs> so you need to understand the shape and the nature of our redemption and how you tackle issues that have legal on that the best bondages that satan puts on people comes from legal issues doesn't even come from open combat manifestation of brute strength it comes from legal issues and if you do not understand that the devil goes around he's looking for evidence just like um a lawyer are you with me a lady sponsored the younger brother to secondary school he came out with flying colors and um, because of the local government the guy is from which is somewhat backward local government in Benue State. He got some of the politicians, one of the politicians in that state at the time, to look favorably on his younger brother that scored so well in the YEC program. And that was how that politician facilitated the guy's um, education to one of the universities in the United Kingdom. He read law came out I think top of the class came back home and then that is elder he quarreled with the elder sister are you, are you, are you following myself before the other sister knew it she had taken her to court and he he had extracted evidences the elder sister didn't know he had ransacked the entire house and extracted strange evidences and uh, made the elder sister destitute through the arm of the law that was the most terrible kind of bondage that woman would go through at that age. The reason was because she had a lawyer in the family. And most of us underestimate the devil, but he's a very competent attorney in the court of heaven. The devil can more perpetually put you in a state of bondage if he finds occasion against you. And so the Bible says that he is poised as a roaring lion seeking whom he might devour he's looking for evidences to take against you in court and just in case your dad was an overly wicked man there is a part of the constitution that can be taken advantage of to implement uh, the result of his wickedness on your life have you read that scripture that says uh, a good man liveth an inheritance for his children's children. Please, what's the meaning of that scripture? Does the scripture mean that if you want to number among good men, make sure you leave a bicycle, leave a borehole for your son? Is that what it means? Okay, let me read that scripture in another way. A, an evil man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. You understand? That man in participating in goodness is unconsciously creating a, a, a bank of goodwill for his children to inherit. And his children will be operating on the currency of the bank of goodwill that their father's goodness has created. You understand what I'm talking about? Do you still remember that when Jacob left home, there was no inheritance? Huh? 
How did he live for? What was the only asset he had? The staff. You are not here. <laughs> the only asset with which Jacob left home was, was what? A staff. But when he was coming back from where he went, the land that was godless, he came back a great nation. It was the covenant that he received that began to produce results. And I don't want to take you into scripture to show you that even genetics, genetic codings were altered just because of the covenant. The covenant had to produce. And there was no other way around his life that the production of the covenant can find expression. God had to alter genetics. The genetic language of biological creatures was altered so that the covenant would produce results. Who told you that the covenant cannot change your genotype situation. I've seen it again and again. SS made A A S S made A S. I see it. The covenant can change your genetic code. The man came back from where he went, land of strangers and unbelievers, came back a great nation. He has major assets. He was a strong man. It was the goodwill of his ancestors that was playing out in his life. And even though he was a smart man, not willing to follow the God of his ancestors, he was overwhelmed by the results that the covenant that he secured, produced. There was no reasonable reason, therefore, for him not to submit to the ways of his ancestors fully. And at old age, we saw he had gained the kind of authority that had the capacity to shape the destinies of his children. An evil man leaves an inheritance for his children. So let's say that that's children, it's children, that is children and what? Grandchildren. You are not for the old man. No. Children's children, children and so the devil can trek, he can travel as far as your your grandfather's archives to find evidence by which he can secure the rights to bring the impact of wickedness. I told you before, an encounter I had with a very terrible beast. The beast appeared while I was praying. And the beast did not move the mouth. The beast spoke to me from the thoughts. It didn't, the mouth didn't move, but he spoke, he transmitted. And I picked what the beast was communicating. Satan can speak through thoughts. He didn't open the mouth. What he communicated? What the beast said was, I'll be back. And if we find you, you will not survive. Did he open the mouth? For me, I now spoke back. Why do you need to go and come back? Me, I'm here now. He looked at me like this because he was high into the heavens. He looked at me. I looked at me. You know, as stubborn as I was to that beast, the reason why the beast didn't cross me, because I didn't have the clearance level in the spirit. I wasn't mature enough to deal with that kind of devil. And the Lord knew that I was ignorantly sincere. So what he did was that he covered me, he shielded me. So it was his presence that that thing saw that he knew that there was going to be no fight that day. Nine years later, the beast came back. But that nine years I had grown and God removed that covering. So I had a nine months battle that came from that moment in the city of Lagos. And that was my induction into the practicalities of spiritual warfare. You might see a pastor sleep and he dies in his sleep. I say, oh, he has gone to be with the Lord. It's not true. A demon had intercepted him. Demons keep time. They keep their promises. They keep their dates. They keep their appointments. You are still with me, say amen. amen. Let me warn you, all of you ladies here. If you want good, good in your life, look for a pastor that you can trust and don't be wiser than that pastor. If not, you will waste your days and become old and become a body to the entire fellowship. Whereas, frivolous counseling, I will not accept again here. Yeah. But if it has to do with marriage, I have your time. Marriage, what is the subject? Marriage. Oh! 
because I know demons will wait for you. Some of you have already made terrible decisions already that you are regretting and you are trying to redeem with prayer. Just because you were manipulated, your soul was manipulated. And the devil created a sensation that looked like, that felt like the impressions of God. The reason why that feeling was aggressive was because it was Satan. If it is God, it will always be gentle. God is a gentle man. I've seen ladies that say, oh, God was not involved. And when I look at their countenance, I know that what is pushing them is aggressive. I know this is Satan. But they could not discern that it was Satan that was involved. So yes, I didn't feel God. In quietness, in returning and in rest, shall, shall ye be saved. And in quietness and confidence shall be your strength. If your, your soul cannot be quiet, it is either forcefully turbulent, it is, it is noisy, means you are under attack. You cannot hear the still small voice of God. Any decision you take under that atmosphere will lead you to the place where there is burning and flames of fire. How many of you here, Satan has told you before, you are going to die? Did you die? Most of you believe the devil more than God. That means God cannot help you. Only the devil can help you. By what means should Satan have the authority to recommend death to you? According to the scriptures, death is an appointment. It is appointed unto man wants to die. I will tell you when I'm going. I will tell you. And I will tell you five years before the time. Because that is when I will accept the appointment. If I'm unwilling to accept the appointment, the appointment will hold. It is appointed. Yes. When I'm now willing, I say, okay. To show you that death has no power over me. It's time to go. There was no giant left that we did not kill. When Goliath came, he was humble. When his cousins manifested, they were cut off. Nothing left to slay. The ground is now better for the gospel than I met it. It means my own life made a difference. The possibilities that are bound for people coming after me are brighter than what I personally experienced. That is the testimony that will make me bow my head out of stress. For it is what? Demons come and tell people about death. And the moment they believe it, even the pastor cannot help. So the question tonight is, whose report will you believe? I remember the second house I rented. You need to see the houses I stayed in this town. Because many of you want to be pastors now because you saw me wearing a turtleneck garment. I will need to take us in one of these Bible study in the evening. We'll look, bring buses. Then I will take you to the houses I stayed. I will show you when my salary was 320000 the house I stayed. When it was 550000 the house I stayed. In the marshes of of our data, where robbery was the order of the day. What kept robbers away from you, you, you know that what kept robbers away was that we prayed every night. We kept watch. So when you want to rob, you hear like, that's not that's not an advisable place to attempt. <laughs> yes, every night. I remember one night they robbed the neighbor in front of us, robbed the one behind with guns. They bypassed our place because we were on a level. My eco And the moment we parked out on that place, the robbers were aware. They said, The man don't go. <laughs> the man don't go. Darkness fell on that place. Oh, when we were there praying, the people were saying we're disturbing them in the night. That these, these people were they disturb us. We didn't even tell them when we were going so that eh? 
the disturbance ended, a strange disturbance. Now, I need to take you to where we stayed. We combated every evil thing where we stayed. Every evil thing. I had a palm tree in one of the houses where I stayed, and my house is fenced. The woman now comes into my house with matches. Comes like, like, like this. And goes to my palm tree, starts cutting the. I will just be, be watching. She will finish cutting them. I've seen all, all that kind of thing. The Bible says that the servant of the Lord must not strike. You must not fight. Anything that looks like a fight, just pretend as if. Just sing a song. You are great. Don't look for something to distract you. May the Lord, may the Lord help us. I need to take you guys to show you that where I was. There was a place, a house I rented. The reason why the house was available was because nobody could rent it. Demons used to come there and clap in the night. So when I was coming to rent it, it was overly cheap. I was wondering. So I paid for two years. I said, take money. Ah. The landlord just gathered the whole money. I said, you are, you are a good tenant. You are a, hey. There were demons there. Eh? Oh. I can sell him or Korea. My eco sell. And I was alone. So I entered the place, I sanctified it. And I began to pray in the night. That was a house where you will see a frog. A frog will just appear. And then when you want to kill it, it will just jump. And then in descending, it will disappear. I said, but I paid for this house. So I have it right here. I don't know what you planted here, but I paid. I paid money. One of those days when prayers in the night. And then my neighbor that I never saw for many years because he was bedridden. He never came out. They said, that the day inside, that the day inside. We were praying one night, the yoke of his affliction broke. And the man came out and said, he just came to see the face of the people praying here. They have given him life again. That's how that man survived. The prayer continued, the prayer continued. Then I now saw one of those nights a witch now stood before me. I said, Oh, you are the one that I've been visiting here. Okay, I take your eyes away. Your eyes, your eyes. The witch now left. Two weeks later, somebody came to visit. I said, Ah, my grandmother is at the back there. She's blind now. I said, okay. I said, Tell her that the pastor here is greeting her. So we know our. <laughs> uh, I can't go. I paid rent. I paid rent. And because I paid rent, it's enough right to dwell. That place was sanitized before the two years rent expired. No more demons appearing. Oh, Some will appear. Oh! Then you will not know if it was a vision or if it was physical. You will need to do more than hey! to drive me. You will need to do something more than that to drive me. The reason is because I think in scriptures. You can't get my mind to think your thoughts. Are you there? So let me tell you the solution of this weapon. The weapon that comes into your top life. God structured the thought of man in such a way that your utterances is superior to your thoughts in authority. That's how your thoughts are structured. So when you are speaking, you stop thinking. So if the devil is going to use your thought to attempt to defeat you, what you need to do is ensure that you don't stop speaking the word of God. So you will die. Ah, bring scriptures from the Bible that, that says you will not die. I shall not die, but live to testify of the works and the goodness of God in the land of the living. When you begin to hear a contrary voice, because the young man that was hearing that voice telling him that he was going to end up a smoker, he had to look for scriptures to counteract that initiative of the devil. And when you show the devil that you are loaded with God's thought molecules, which is the word of God, deceiving spirits will have little or no ground around your life. The unfortunate thing is this. No pastor can help someone that is deceived. 
if you are deceived, as long as you believe Satan, what Satan told you, it will take effect in your life. The best a pastor can do is to make you disbelieve those things that you believe that made the intentions of darkness of force in your life. Please help me tell your neighbor who's report. Will you believe? That's the first that. The second weapon the devil uses is what we call fairy darts, fear. They are weapons of intimidation. Weapons of fear. Just like faith attracts God. Fear attracts devils. Turn your Bible to the book of Job. Job chapter 3 verse 25. Job chapter 3 verse 25. For the thing which I greatly feared is what is come upon me and that which I was afraid of is come unto me. So fear is an instrument that attracts just like faith attracts God. Fear attracts demons. So the next weapon the devil will use against you is fiery darts. So today you need to stand face to face with your fears and conquer it. Fear is a sign that you are going to be defeated. Men of faith cannot accommodate fear. It's a luxury that is too costly. Hallelujah. And that's why I told you, Satan will need to do more than gibberish to make me fear. The first law of spiritual warfare and 365 times in the book of Psalms, you'll find it, thou shalt not fear. 365 times. One thou shalt not fear for each day. It is a taboo for you to be afraid. A taboo. Most of you are victims of fear. When you are ready to live the life of victory, you will do something to your fear. For the thing which I greatly feared is come upon me. And that which I was afraid of is come unto me. It will trace you to your bedroom. Trace you to your hostel. It will trace you to your residence. It will trace you to your classroom. It will trace you to the barber shop where you are shaving your hair. It will come upon you. I don't know what happened one day in the hostel. And everybody just started running. Every, in fact, the level of... So we just finished from the lab then. I was putting on my lab coat. And everything was running out of the hostel. I, I like that moment. I was the only one going inside. Because thou shalt not. Guess what? When I went there, I didn't see anything. I thought there was a beast looking. There was nothing there. You are not afraid because there's something. You are, your, your fear is a means through which that which Satan wants to bring on you will come upon you. It's not because there is something. That's why you're afraid. Satan gave you that fear so that he can legitimize his visitation. So when you hear the story of Job, he's telling you the testimony now. He, he, the thing he feared. The next thing we are going to do tonight, you are going to cancel some thoughts that are giving you ideas that are not compatible with the word of God. Then you will now stand face to face with your fear and say, no, I'm no longer your slave. Talk to it. Because that fear came to you by a demon. It's a subtle demon. It was when I went to preach in Abuja, my eyes just opened. Whenever I'm preaching, there's something I hear. So my eyes just open. I just saw that spirit. Jesus Christ. So, and the spirit was surprised that I saw it. I said, he didn't, he didn't wait for me to. Oh! Now you cast out Musale. The thing that I greatly fear, it has come. I always tell ladies that are pregnant, come, come to the school of thou shall not fear. When you become pregnant, that's when you need the word of God more than any other person. Because you are vulnerable. The weight you are carrying can make you weak. And you will think that weakness is beyond the physical. 
And Satan likes you to believe anything that is wrong because he can take advantage of you to begin to sow his thoughts into your thought life. It will be an entry point, a, a highway of access. So you need to take the pill for every day. And that pill is time. So when you wake up in the morning, you say to yourself, you prophesy today, there is nothing out there that I'm afraid of. Everything there is afraid of me. When we were in school, two guys um, went to River Benway and uh, they said they wanted to swim. We paid for an accommodation in the staff quarters. So that was where we were. And the hostel was clumsy, so many students. So we just paid for a place in the staff quarters so that we will we'll not be clustered. And that place is close to River Benway. So we just moved to the river. That's where we wash. So one of those days I went to wash. And this guy showed up. He came to the river with a limp. We didn't know that was his last limp. And he dived, never came. The fishermen gathered, they threw themselves into the water, took a stick so that he would hold it. They went to check. The way the river Benway is, you might see sand here. And then small water here. Don't test that water with both feet. Three of this building will enter that place and it will not come up. Meanwhile, the guy came there with his girlfriend and lied to the girlfriend that he knows how to swim. And they went and sat somewhere. And then the girlfriend said, oh, You know how to swim. So he just wanted to come and then test, you know? He now tested in that kind of place that three buildings can enter in common. Don't start your journey with lies, okay? The Lord will help you in Jesus' name. I saw that young man die. An old man now came to the river bank and said, well, if they can give him 25,000, he will we'll bring the young man. That the mermaids have not yet eaten him. They have kept him in uh, solitary confinement. So you can still negotiate. That was when I saw all the kind of speech. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. It's still open for negotiation. But he, he, as a consultant at this level, you will need to engage him with 25,000 first. So the stakeholders were not interested in the man's offer. And they left. It was in the evening that they were not looking for the man. The man was no longer available. But that day I heard things. When they now paid the man, the man now went and said, ah, they've even removed his eyes. That tomorrow evening his body will float. As the man said it, so was it. I saw all, all that because it was behind my house. Are you, are you safely? I don't know what to tell you people and what not to tell. I don't know which one we help and which one we not. I did not know that by seeing that guy's death, it was quietly recorded that mermaid spirits were powerful. I did not know. Until I went to work in the finished working offshore. We came back to shore by 11 o'clock in the night. That was when we came back to the shore. And a strange spirit began to attack me from that. And the foundation for that attack was what I saw. So when I was now praying, I was wondering, what is it? God, you know God is powerful. God can take your memory into something that you have forgotten. It. Every such premise that was left open in your life will be exploited by the kingdom of darkness. The second weapon is called fiery darts. And the Bible says that the antidote for fiery darts is the shield. What is the nature of faith? Faith believes. So, the devil will camp around every doubt in your life. What is the nature of faith? Faith has knowledge of God in it. Whenever you begin to realize that you are becoming more conscious of the ability of the devil, much more than the ability of God, it means you are depreciating in your knowledge of God. The devil will camp around your knowledge of him. I don't want to know about devils, I want to know about angels. But if I see 
devils on the way I cast them out. What is the nature of faith? Faith speaks. Faith is not quiet. Faith is not mute. For if thou can believe in thy heart the Lord Jesus, and confess with thy mouth that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. The shield of faith is an answer to the fairy tale. The moment you stop believing, you will start experiencing fear. Bible says and give Satan no place. He will seek occasion. He will seek compatibility. He will seek alignment. He will try to sow talks into your life. And the moment you accept it, he becomes married to you in your talks. And he'll be feeding your talks, giving you feelings and emotions to authenticate the talks that he's giving you. It will take the word of God to shed light. If the devil speaks, it means convert what he's saying. Opposite. The opposite is true. If he says he will die, it means I will live. The time came, people came, three different people came with, with visions that I died. I loved! That was not a prayer point because I've gone far, farther than that. Yes. And their dreams were too weak to make me change my position. I have a covenant of life. Even people that stay with me closely don't die. Eh? You are my friend. Alright? You will live long. <laughs> mm, I know what Jesus told me. Even if I see a beast with a horn like this, he changes. That's why they don't appear to me. They know they, know they work for this man. You know they work. <laughs> you know they work. And you, every day you are celebrating demons that came to you. It means that your life is porous. You don't believe in the Lord. Wake up! Wake up. Because the summer is ended. The times for jokes and half measures is over. These are the days in which God wants to showcase his mighty warrior church. And this statement must be fulfilled as it was in the days of old. And the least among us must be as strong as death. I see it in my spirit. I see a day when there will be so many strong men, Satan will be forced to move backward. He will no longer reign. I see that day in my lifetime. When the Lord will bestow authority and from the pulpit we can say, to a governor, your days, men and men take care of us. Press, press men will need to come to church because that's where breaking news will become coming from. You say it once, it happens, say it two times, it happens, it's pressed around. The third time, when you say, I have something again, NTA will come. Oh, you might say something, they will arrest you. While you are under detention, the thing will happen. You say, We are sorry. We are sorry. I'm not afraid of arrest. While I'm there, eh, the thing will happen. And the one that came to arrest me, he won't sleep. He won't sleep. That one is sleep. You will not discover that sleep is a gift that God gives every night. God will forget to give you your allocation. And for three nights, you'll be awake. The fat belly, you would have slimmed down. He doesn't need to diet. Without sleep, the belly will go down. Oh! Oh! That I am arrested will make me stop what I'm doing. In that prison. Ah! No. Hey! It is what you fear that will come on you. I saw that in the ministry of the outside, he was not arrested once. And meanwhile, there were utterances he made directly against the state. He was bigger than the state. There was something that backed him. Can we pray? Can you, be, can you rebel against the devil this night? Can you rebel?
Maya. Kurama Hasakaya. Can you rebel against the devil? Who is he that speaketh a thing and he cometh to pass when the Lord has not spoken? Can you rebel against him? Thank you for watching. And if this video has blessed you, please like, kindly subscribe, and also tap on the notification bell so you can stay notified and updated on our new videos. And please do not forget to share the link to people so we can bless more people. And most importantly, we want to know how this video has blessed you under the comment section. Don't forget to subscribe.